New England has a history of being at the forefront of vigorous debate over religious freedom and individual rights. This past weekend, protesters in Maine made clear what they thought of the Supreme Court's Hobby Lobby decision, which allows the family-owned business to opt out of contraception coverage for its employees based on religious objections. A similar debate is playing out right here in Massachusetts, where a small Christian college claims its religious beliefs should exempt it from anticipated anti-discrimination policies. Gordon College is a small Christian school in Wynnum that has long frowned on same-sex relationships and other behaviors it considers inconsistent with biblical scripture. That led college president Michael Lindsay to write President Obama, seeking a religious exemption from a planned policy banning federal contractors from discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation. Soon after, the city of Salem told the college it could no longer manage Old Town Hall, where the school holds theatrical productions, saying the college violates its non-discrimination ordinance. But in an open message to the Gordon community, Michael Lindsay said that he was standing up for religious freedom. Sending the letter, he wrote, was in keeping with our decades-old conviction that, as an explicitly Christian institution, Gordon should set the conduct expectations for members of our community. Nothing has changed in our position. Now, we should mention that we invited President Lindsay or another representative from Gordon College to join us. They declined. I am joined, however, by Salem's mayor. This is Kim Driscoll, and she's here to talk to us a little bit about how she arrived at the decision to cut ties with Gordon College. It's great to have you here on Greater Boston. Thank you for the invitation. Did you have any idea when you made this decision, the firestorm you'd sort of be stepping into? You know, we, we really didn't. For us, it was really about wanting to uphold our non-discrimination ordinance and really recognizing that as a community, we are welcoming to all, and we just can't contract with an entity that isn't going to subscribe to practices that, that don't allow for that. Well, let's back up just a little bit and talk about exactly the relationship between Gordon College and Salem. What did they do for you? Since 2008, Gordon College has managed Old Town Hall. It's a publicly owned facility. It is home to events and functions and uh, two affiliated operations, Cry Innocent and the Museum of Salem, mm -hmm. both operated by Gordon Affiliates. And for us, it was an opportunity to have another entity manage both and maintain a building that allows for public functions and private functions and uh, mm -hmm. to really to up the level of involvement and activity taking place in that facility. Sure. Now, you just mentioned that you made this decision based on an ordinance, a city ordinance, that, which does not allow you to do business with people who do what you see as discriminatory practices. Yes. So, having said that, um, Mayor Driscoll, what will you do in the future uh, with other religious organizations that you might be involved mm -hmm. in and other entities? You know, I'm sure you have a lot of vendors out there. Yep, we sure do. So, Salem has passed a non-discrimination ordinance in April of this year. It's a fully LGBT. LGBT inclusive mm -hmm. non-discrimination ordinance. We've always had non-discrimination clauses in contracts. Mm -hmm. This uh, new ordinance, though, was a little bit broader than that. Uh, this was brought to light, uh, or Gordon's you know, failure to comply with it was brought to light by the president's letter, which caused heightened scrutiny, and frankly, a lot of people in our community to feel offended and devalued, mm -hmm. and that caused us to look deeper. Um, if there are other contracts that are violating our non-discrimination ordinance, we will terminate those as well. It certainly isn't an attempt to pick on Gordon, uh, some an entity that we've had a really positive relationship for with for the number of years but for you know this latest interaction now does the ordinance describe religion and freedom of religion absolutely and I think it's fair to point out that this is not uh, trying to um, foreclose Gordon's right to practice their own religion um, the issue that we have is we're not going to contract with an entity that has a policy that is clearly discriminatory on its face if you've read the conduct a student conduct behavior it's not just students it's staff and mm -hmm. faculty it's mm -hmm. hiring it's on campus it's off campus they have a right to maintain that as a private institution, but we certainly cannot contract with them for use of a publicly owned facility with such discriminatory language and be in compliance with our non-discrimination ordinance. You saw in the story that we ran just a second ago before our interview here, um, President Gordon made some comments, response to all that was mm -hmm. occurring, and he said signing the letter was in keeping with our decades old convictions. Nothing has changed in our position. So if that's true, uh, Mayor Driscoll, then what changed in your view? Because right. something, you know, you've had a long-standing relationship with Gordon, right. something changed. So I think what happened uh, when the president of Gordon signed that letter off to the White House mm -hmm. looking to be exempted from federal laws, it brought to light in our community, um, really, as I said, fe people feeling offended and devalued that we would be contracting with an institution that was taking that step. It wasn't, in fact, President Lindsay's letter to the White House that sparked our need to uh, separate our service with them. 
Um, it was, in fact, our new non-discrimination ordinance, which was passed just earlier this spring, and Gordon's long-standing policies. Those were not things that we were aware with. When they signed our contract, we had your typical non-discrimination clause in the right. contract that we had with Gordon. Uh, the more fully LGBT-inclusive non-discrimination ordinance does not comport with mm -hmm. their student standards, or I should say their standards of behavioral conduct for all. So the two things coming to light, the letter that he wrote, which caused a lot of concern within our community, and now the acknowledgement that they have a policy that is discriminatory on its face. Mm -hmm. Now they may be allowed to do that as a religious institution, but we're not allowed to have a contract with an entity, especially for management of a public building, with an entity that has a discriminatory language within their standards. Uh, some would argue that your contract with Gordon's was uh, coming up anyway. Correct, it was. In September. So, you, th and, and this, this uh, exemption that they're asking for is not in place yet. So why didn't you see the contract through, just go through yeah. September? Why would you have made that decision so now? So we could have said, um, we'll just let things roll until September mm -hmm. 1st. But we're not a community that operates that way. Mm -hmm. We have, for many, many years, I think, learned a vital lessons from 1692 in the witch trials that when you ostracize, when you discriminate people anywhere, um, you end up in a circumstance where you have a community that is not going to allow that going forward now. So that happened in 1692. We now champion equality. We champion social justice. We think this is important. This is not something that we could just write out till September 1st. And again, it's not the letter that was sent to the White House. It's the standards that exist on the book mm -hmm. that prohibit uh, the types of activities that we look to uphold and make sure that there is an equal value and equal equality for all within our community. So, so we, we couldn't do it. Talk to me about Gordon College and, and how they've responded to you. I did have an opportunity to speak with President Lindsay. And this is a, a lousy way to meet somebody. He's relatively new at the institution. And we uh, conversed over the phone. And I explained to him that we have a problem, that we have lots of folks here who are ready to protest the cry innocent play, who really felt strongly that our ties for the use of Old Town Hall were problematic, given their stance. I think he understood. And we're uh, certainly working to try and protect the things like Cry Innocent and the museum, who right. are now, now forming their own independent organizations. I think people in the Gordon community are as outraged, frankly, as folks in the Salem community. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a small institution on the North Shore, but there's alumni, there's faculty, there's students right. who live in Salem. We heard from a lot of people who were just as upset as folks who aren't connected with the Gordon community are. Um, uh, as many folks from the Gordon community are upset, just as many folks who aren't. And it was something that we felt strongly we just couldn't let stand. Residents of Salem feeling the same way those at Gordon do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's a shame to end our relationship this way. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not anything that we were looking to gin up. But if we have a non-discrimination ordinance and it's fair and it's uh, something that says we stand for equality for all, we are going to stand by that. And uh, that's what we did here. And um, I'm, I'm proud of our community for the way they've handled this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that there's a happy ending to this story. There's no reason right. that you can't be a devout Christian and also not discriminate. And that's really um, what I hope. If I had a hope, that's why I hope it would end. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks so much for coming to see us yeah. here in Greater Boston. Mayor Driscoll.